Because actually, if you look at this, the saddest thing for me is I don't hate on anyone who did or didn't go out. Like, for example, the SK one, I just find disappointing. It's why, if people notice, it's why I didn't get that hyped about SK winning the first time against Fnatic. I just don't, I can't fundamentally believe in that team. It's way too one-dimensional. Even the way, like, I don't even think they know how to win in any other way. They've just got such a limited fucking set of win conditions. But the sad one for me is the other group. It's how it's how fucking underwhelming BDS is just whimper exit to the group stages. Like, this is a team where... Especially of that, that series before, the one they had against um, the Heretics the first time round. Like, this should mm -hmm. be a team I should be able to believe in and actually think it has, like, some strong qualities. What a fucking whack way to go out, mate. Yeah, it, it was tough to watch. I mean, they kept on doing their same thing of just picking, like, Olaf. You know, pick Olaf, pick Darius. I just think that they're, they, had a, they have very specific champion pools and their champions are just worse now. Like, Cassio is not great anymore. Like, people are playing Tristana. I guess that could be, like, a fine lane for Cassio. But in general, like their champions that they got away with so many times are no longer good and they can't pick up. You could tell this team just cannot pick up champions. Like where the fuck is LeBlanc? How is BDS still blue side banning LeBlanc? You had four fucking weeks to learn this champion and it's so fucking OP and they just refuse to learn it. I mean, I guess Nuck just can't pick up new champions and, you know, they have to go back to just being the same team. I think they're just figured out at this point and the players individually are playing slightly worse than before. You know, Sheo is just... Average again, he's middle of the pack to like lower half of that, uh, lower half of the league in terms of jungle, and they just don't feel like they have that X factor anymore. And this was something that a lot of people uh, saw before. I mean, how many games was Crowny just playing a hyper carry? How many games was he playing Broken Zeri or Jinx when Jinx was really strong, or Aphilios when Aphil before Aphilios was nerfed, and he would just carry the whole game like once they got once they grouped up. AD carries are not like that anymore. Now the best AD carries are like. Pope Kaisa, you have Zaya. Like, these are not the same 80 carries that are just hyper carries to 1v9 the game. And if he's not able to do that, I don't think the other players are going to, you know, bring them over the finish line. The saddest thing is, as well, you saw on point about the Adam champion pool. Dude, it's beyond a meme at this point in time. Like, here's the problem. He's clearly not just playing it because he... Like, here's the difference, right? When my boy PoE used to stay with the same small champion pool and do all those weird builds, I actually believe him. I think sometimes he did think that he took a matchup that to, should on paper be, like, losing, but he made it, like, even by knowing how to play the lane or play a specific, like, power spike on an item. I don't believe Adam does any of that shit, Dom. I think, for real, it's, like, an even more cynical version of Monty's analysis that like he works within the team because he stupidly does just fucking play it up all the game long and doesn't understand he's essentially just like a fucking jungler magnet but he's not doing it like as some macro genius who understands how the wave state works or to help his bot lane have pressure relief so I actually do think for real he's not playing any of these because he thinks there's a unique Darius angle Dom he just really can only play Darius Olaf and then a bit well, oh, a bit and the odd Scion game that's it that's just who Adam is like the saddest thing is he is the most obvious slam dunk player to replace in this team with the exception of if you just go on the whole French angle if you must have French players then maybe you don't but like mate if you just put in a proper top leader in this team it would actually be a pretty good team like this team could actually be like legit contenders if they just replace Adam in my opinion yeah yeah, yeah, I mean, your your tweet is aging perfectly. The one where it's like, yeah, it's about time before, like, it's going to be a, a, just a little bit of time before Nuck is on, like, a, an average team again. And he's just, yeah, and he's just average. He's on an average team. Fifth, sixth, that is bang average right there, so... Oh, mate, with their, their, their worst thing right now about the fact that they've bombed out now is they now have to go through that fucking championship thing. Dude, they haven't looked worse all year. They could really fuck it up and not get through. Oh, easily, easily. I mean, if you look right now at the other teams, I mean, if you're if you're just an objectively worse team than Heretics, who, who is actually going to be in that that you're going to be a better team than? Maybe Koi, because like Koi is, yep. is, is if Koi somehow makes it, okay, maybe you can be better than Koi because Koi is just not in form. Maybe if Mad Lions continue shitting the bed and they keep the same form that they've kept for the last like three, four weeks, maybe you can be better than Mad Lions. I feel That's like it, like a lot of these teams are are, are just better than, yes. than BDS right now. And the other thing about the, the PoE angle that I was thinking about is if you consider the, the era that PoE was playing in, at least he had champions that made sense that were like always good. They're always yeah. just serviceable champions. Like Olaf and Darius are not champions you always want to play. If you could yes. pick like stable top laners, you'd want different champions to be really good. You wish you could have like the really good Orn player or like the really solid Nart player that can always weak side. He can always be relevant within the game. But the champi champions that Adam's really good at, Olaf and, and Darius, are just bad right now. They're, they're just not good right now because 
what's the best top laner? Oh, it's Renekton. Okay, well, Renekton just beats both those champions in lane. So you have to be so much better at those champions than the Renekton player that you end up winning anyway. And, you know, Evie just did his job. He did his job. It's not like he was fucking completely 1v9ing the game or doing these, like, insane Renekton mechanics that you couldn't possibly conceive of. He just played a normal Renekton, and Renekton is just a good champion into Olaf. You just win the lane. That's it. That's all you need to do to beat this guy. There's also, by the way, the ultimate black mark. It's like, guys, he ha we actually call Evie like one of the worst players to play in the LEC. You're supposed to be a fucking, I am a young rising talent stud carry top laner. Then go to town, mate. You know what? You just take care of Evie personally, and then it's all over, right? Game's over at that point in time. Like, give me a fucking break. Like, it's just, what a whack way to go out. The reason I feel like it's so sad is here's the story of this fucking year in the LEC. SK Gaming in the winter split was on a fucking heater in the groups that were looking like they could do it. Oh my God, they SK is it. in the fucking they, championship. They, oh, Jesus. They so blew it. Remember, they were in that fourth place match. They could have won it. They could have gone further. They didn't. After that, then you had BDS. BDS was a game from winning the championship. Blew it. Didn't go to MSI. Come back. Now not even in the top four of the playoffs now. Now they've got a championship. They, Basically, it's just like G2, Mad Lions, Fluke runs, and then people blowing their window. Like, all these teams, SK could actually have been in a final. BDS could have a championship title right now. Like, these teams are all blowing their window. Like, it's past now. Like, these they weren't fundamentally the best teams. And so when they had their meta, when they had their strengths, when someone was on a heater, someone was an MVP candidate, they had a shot. Now that after that, now it's all normalized. By the time the championship round thing comes out, it's like you say, on paper right now, everyone who needs to should beat them. Like, G2 forget that one XL would beat them right now of course XL would beat BDS look how fucking look how much better XL looks in these games I mean SK even like, SK, SK probably should SK could pop yes. off easy mate yeah it, it's it's really it's really weird to think about but I mean BDS I, I felt like most people had this this idea of you know how good BDS would actually be I mean it felt like everything was peaking at the right time for them I mean they had the same junglers that had been meta for a long time the Cheo was actually good at now you're having new metas uh, new uh, junglers being introduced to the meta it doesn't seem like Cheo is really good at picking up champions um and it doesn't seem like he has that wide of a champion like an existing champion pool he's not one of these experienced vets that can just go back to different metas I mean for Yankos if Trundle comes back into the meta or Poppy comes back into the meta it's like I've been playing that shit for years yes. he'll easily be able to pick it up and just be a, a you know, a really good jungler, a top tier jungler again, doesn't feel the same for Sheo. He plays Poppy, doesn't look like he has the experience to, to play it. He plays, like, we haven't seen a Trundle game. Maybe he ends up playing it, or maybe we saw one and it was just ultra forgettable, but it just feels like he's just not playing the same game as everyone else. So I, I'm, I'm kind of out on BDS. I, I think it's kind of sad that they're actually going to the championship. If you think about the championship right now, the teams that are going to end up in the championship. Okay, so there's a realistic possibility that Koi makes it, right? You have SK who placed 5th, 6th. You have BDS who placed 5th, 6th. You have Mad Lions who placed 7th, 8th. And then you could have Koi that placed 7th, 8th in the championship. You could have four of the worst teams in LEC actually be in the championship stage. I feel like this format, like the, the three splits, it's tough. It's, it's, it's tough. I think that maybe they need to slightly wait summer higher and and like winter less because the fact that winter and spring are both the same points i mean you have teams that are qualifying from spring points like that's where koi's points are coming from koi has 150 points they might make the championship right the, ch the season finals they have 150 points they got 80 of them in spring i think that's weird to me i, I don't know i just don't like that or sorry 80 of them in winter that's what i meant see more cool funny interesting clips based on topics from my content well subscribe to this channel then or you know be a pleb and don't